I recognize that by saying this out loud, we may be inviting the kiss of death, but I think finally things have begun to level out for us here at Kasim Pasha. Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 24 of Bottom to the Top. Hi, I'm Mr. Cellophane. I hope you are having an absolutely wonderful day. Last episode, we did see ourselves get back to our winning ways. We managed to pick up a victory in a friendly immediately following. Our next match wasn't as good. We lost 1-0 to Ankara Gushu. Uh, it was a very tight game. It did not help that we lost Iron Gomis to a red card at the end of that one, but we were able to bounce back against Gush Tepe, a team that had beaten us the first time around by beating them 1-0. Yeah, we just lost the friendly we played in an off week, but we're not going to pay too much attention to that because things are just getting better in and around the club. As we look at our team dynamics, our cohesion is actually pretty good. We've got our club atmosphere in the green. No players are unhappy. Our managerial support is up to average, which if you've been following these last uh, couple of episodes in Turkey very closely, you know just how far down that had gotten. And as we look at the number of team members that have uh, actively opposed us, that number is now down to five. Yes, we don't actually have the full-throated support of anyone on the squad, but we were up to 17, I believe, at one point. Could have been even worse, if I am not mistaken. So being down to five guys who are not uh, completely in agreement with us well, on basically anything is pretty good. Our happiness, we saw this last episode, it's actually improved. Not fantastic that that friendly loss uh, certainly did not help. Really, the only issues around the squad are around playing time with the team members that we most expected from Ben Wanis. Uh, we know that he wasn't happy because he wasn't getting played. Now, that was because the board dictated it, and we actually did what the board wanted us to do. Also, Mamadou Fall. He's been complaining off and on. We have been playing him a bit more, and I believe he will be getting another start in the match coming up. Also, Ali Emre Yanar, our backup goalkeeper, is concerned with his playing time. He already made the commitment to not stick with us, to become a free agent at the end of his contract, so I'm really not all that concerned about how he's feeling. There are a few members of the team who aren't happy with us just a little bit because we did back down in the last episode to the demands of Mamadou Fall to actually get more playing time. They didn't agree with him on that, but we're going to do what's best for the team, and Fall honestly has been playing decently well as our striker in a position that you know, we've had our challenges this year. We were actually able to make a couple of deals at the end of the transfer window uh, in the second week of February. A couple of players went out. Uh, Yassine Eritia went out for 4,500 euros. He was a team player that we was not seeing any action. Also, Sinan Alkas went out on loan to, to Fatsa. We did bring in four players. German Diaz, we got him on a free transfer, the 29-year-old Argentinian, to give us a little bit of backup and some extra help on the attacking side of our midfield. A solid player all around, if not spectacular. He's made two appearances for us with a 6-3 average rating. So, like I said, not spectacular, but we did need that assistance. He is worth somewhere in the neighborhood of around 3 million euros. So if we do decide to move him on, we can obviously sell him for a profit. We did bring in a couple of additional center backs, needing a little bit of extra depth at the position since we do play three at the back. Atakan Gundus stands at six foot two. He's 25 years old. He's Turkish. We also needed more Turkish options on the roster to be perfectly fair we paid 135,000 for him and 155,000 euros went to Arda Kizildaj uh again Turkish 27 years old not quite as good or maybe a little bit better it was kind of six and one half dozen or another we were originally planning on signing only one of the two but we decided that uh having both would probably benefit us more in the long run 
But finally, we did make our splash to try to solve our problems at the left wing back position. Ben Wanis is going to be moving on. There is absolutely no way on God's green earth we can keep him, not with the salary demands that we saw in yesterday's episode. He is very good. He's 23 years old, stands at 5'10", 156 pounds, out of the Republic of Ireland. Uh, we got him from Hearts. He was playing in Scotland. 800000 was his transfer fee. He's worth about double that on the open market right now. So either way, we got ourselves a steal, and he has been playing very well for us. He's only made the two appearances, already picked up an assist, which is more than we could say for Ben Wanis in all of the matches that he played with a 725 average rating he is going to be a stalwart on our back line and we are very very happy to have him on the team and with that said he will be starting as our left wing back on the left side of our back five with Dom Joni Ugrish Khan and Omeru along with Claudio Vink on the right side. Siddiqui and Diak will be in the midfield. Nicholas of course is in goal. Diaz is going to get the start on the attacking midfield on the left-hand side, Yusuf on the right. Ali is going to get the start. Uh, so I lied about Mamadou Fall, but Ali is going to get the start as our striker. But Mamadou Fall will be on the bench and will most likely be coming in probably around the 60-minute mark unless Ali just absolutely goes off, which honestly is kind of what we're hoping for. So we come into this match sitting in 12th place, eight points clear of the relegation zone. That last relegation spot is currently occupied by Hatea Spore, who we are taking on today. They are in 16th as Claudio Vink is going to bring it up just a minute into this match, working it to the far side, playing it in the middle. Sadiki, he's got Diaz in the box, left wing for Furlong, back for Diaz, dropping it for Sadiki. Furlong again, and Furlong's going to take a shot looking for the top corner, but he's going to miss everything 8698 on hand here in Hatai for this match first shot of the game going the way of Kasim Pasha a very good early foray into the offensive zone but since then the match momentum has swung toward the home side Hatea Spore enjoying the majority of the possession currently at 60 three percent as we hit the 30 minute mark hopefully we can continue on the attack and continue to press whatever advantage we might be able to get but through 40 minutes only four shots on goal so far in the entire match we have three of them make that three of the five as we head toward halftime a bit more time added on than we were originally anticipating and that is your score at halftime nil nil 5-2 to two, the shots in favor of Kasim Pasha. They have enjoyed the majority of the possession. We are winning the XG battle, but nobody is winning the game. Telling our team at the half that we hope they can hold on to the ball. Maybe a little bit more, because if we do have the possession, obviously the team that has the ball has the greater chance of scoring the ball. But right now, our offense has not done very much. Although there was very good movement in and around the box in that early attack, we have not seen that replicated as we have not yet seen a highlight since. In fact, we are getting very close to having to make some substitutions, which we are going to do as we see some tired legs in the midfield. Diok is going to make way for Evan Laidler. Also, Ali Demerol not doing the job as we expected. Uh, we can't put on Mamadou Fall, however, because we have too many foreign players. So that means we are going to probably have to make a change with our center back. So Dom Joni is going to come out, even though after the last match week, he did make the team of the week. Arda Kizildaj is going to come in, which means Mamadou Fall will be able to take the place of Ali Demerel as three changes are going to be made. Hopefully, they're not being made following a goal from Hatea Spore as they are going to throw the ball in along the near side. Rivas with it, drops it back. Kilama back for engine. Rivas now along the near side. He's got a man with him, throwing it into the middle. Strandberg putting it on goal, but missing everything wide. It will be a goal kick. The changes will be made. The last four shots on goal have gone Hatea Spore's way. 
Ukers Khan drops it for Laidler. Diaz can't get his head on that. Knocked back. Mamadou Fall unable to control that one. Strandberg with it. Moving it forward over to uh, the right-hand side near the far sideline. Dropping it back for Vindheim into the middle. Omeru getting in the way. Knocking it clear is Claudio Vink. But Hateaspor is going to regain control and push it forward. Vindheim in the middle. That shot is off of the post and cleared away. It will be a Hateaspor final third throw in, but great defensive play after yet another shot was missed on the Kasim Pasha goal. That one hit the woodwork. We got super lucky because. Uh, Ugershkan, while making that clearance, did run the risk of getting called for a penalty. His Yusuf is going to send it from range, and he's just going to miss everything. That's not really uh, the strength of his game. Two minutes added on. Furlong in for Siddiqui. He'll lose it, though, to Strandberg. Mikalenko finds Strandberg again. Caught in their own zone. Lonevik holds on, plays it ahead for Aberjanya. He's got his man. Aberjanya gets it back. Plays it into the middle. Laidler can intercept. Rivas knocked away from Claudio Vink, but shot on goal and tipped aside by Nicholas. A minute left in added time and a corner kick opportunity for Hatea Spore. All of these things I've been saying about things getting better, things getting more positive, and we run the risk of losing this match 1-0 at the death. Aberjanya into the middle, headed away. Mamadou Falls clears it. Rivas will retrieve about 15 seconds left, and they are going to expire with no further activity. At one point, we were leading eight shots to three. They ended up leading the game with 12 shots to nine, but nobody scored. Nil-nil is your draw. We remain eight points ahead of Hatea Spore. No better and no worse than we were before we started. You know what? That's not necessarily true. We've actually just moved into 11th place, leapfrogging Gush Tepe on goal difference. We both have 32 points. Of course, they now have a game in hand on us, so hopefully they will lose and we will be able to retain our position. Otherwise, we will just drop right back in the 12th. And like much of the season, no matter where we go forward, we always manage to find our way right back where we were. We have also received our 2026 youth intake. It was deemed an excellent one. We're going to reserve judgment until we see them. It's very hard to take a look at 15 and sometimes 16-year-old players and get an idea of where they are going to go. Although the best one position to move into the starting lineup sooner rather than later is Kadirhan Ashi. He is a, a decent-looking defensive midfielder. That's really all I can say about him right now. He's only 15 years old. Uh, he's not even 15 and a half yet, to be perfectly honest with you. Stands at six foot one already. Could use a little bit more bulk and work on the stamina a little bit. And he's not nearly as fast as we, we would like him to be, but a generally solid player. His teamwork already has been shining through on the practice pitch pretty good with positioning and tackling as well so so not too uh, bad with his defensive responsibilities everybody else will just have to wait and see none of that really matters though as we have the more pressing matter of the home match against Alanya Spore now we're going to make a couple of changes. Uh, Diaz picked up an injury in training. He's going to be out for the next couple of weeks. Suleiman is going to slot in his position. We're also bringing Mamadou Fall back into the fray. So it will be Nicholas in goal. A back three of Damjoni, Ugershkan, and Omeru with Furlong and Vink on the wingback positions. Siddiqui and Diak in the midfield. Suleiman again slotting in on that left-hand side. Yusuf on the right with Mamadou Fall up top. A chance to move a couple of spots up the table into 10th place is on the line. We come into this one sitting 13th. Alanya Spore is in 8th. Only four points separate us. We can move ahead of three teams if we can hang on to this one, which I know we've just jinxed because we just got called for a penalty. Why? Have I not learned my lesson around this game to know that you open your mouth, football manager listens and says, ha, 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 screw you, pal. Jean Nové lines up. Oh, he gets Nicholas to fall down to his right. And he easily pots in his sixth goal of the year. Going down in the first eight minutes, 
by giving up a penalty is just not the way that I saw this match going. Can we please get it back? Yusuf back for Vink. Finds Yusuf in the box. In the middle. Mamadou fall wide open. His fifth goal of the year. Does the flag stay down? I believe it will. Are they going to go to VAR? They are not. It is a goal. Mamadou Fall coming through yet again. Didn't do anything in the first half of the season. To be fair, we really didn't play him a lot. But he has come up huge when he has his number called. And he's able to equalize for us one to one at home. We just need to continue to play that way to get the ball into the box as early as possible. Move it around to the open man. We will always have somebody there. At least that's the way I would like to believe it is. But usually we're able to get somebody isolated in front. All we have to do is get the ball to them. And that's exactly what happened on the equalizer from Mamadou Fall in the 14th minute. At the end of the first half, that is where we are going to remain. 1-1 one, one is your score. A couple of bookings for our back line. Damjoni and Omeru already on yellow cards. We're going to have to keep our eye on them. 5-4, to four, the shots on goal in favor of Kasim Pasha. Possession was even, which is a huge step up in our last match. Why do we keep playing down to the level of our competition? Why is it that we have so much trouble with the teams that are at risk of rally? and we play so much better against the teams that are ahead of us. I don't understand. And if I did, I would know how to tactically combat our shortfalls. And of course, I, I don't understand how this game works because I told our attackers that I was delighted with their work in the final third because, you know, they scored a goal and everything. And Mamadou Fall, the one who scored that goal, looked switched off. Because I guess he's not delighted with his performance, even though he did manage to score. I, I just I don't understand. We're going to shout some encouragement toward our team as nothing really has happened in this first half so far. But a throw in for us. Damjani getting in for Furlong. Ugu Khan to Siddiqui back to, for Damjani. To the safety of Nicholas, who will wait for the defense to retreat as he slowly dribbles the ball up to the edge of his area. Ahead, looking for Suleiman. It's not going to find him, but the ball's going to be knotted down to Mamadou Fall. Mamadou Fall with a shot that's going to deflect off of the defenseman who is like three feet to his right somehow and easily trickle in on goal. Um, yeah, guys, uh, you've not looked uh, very inspiring. Uh, Salam, uh, Suleiman is going to come off. Ali Demarel is going to take his place. The reason being, uh, we need to, you know, we got the whole foreigner thing going on. Evan Liedler coming in for Lamine Diak as well. And Dom Joni, Omeri, I mean, neither of them is playing exceptionally well. So Arda is going to come in for Omeru as we make a single change on our back line three overall with just over 15 minutes remaining in this match Alanya Spore out shooting us right now 10 to 8 they have also taken the lead in possession and XG but 1-1 remains the score but they will control the ball with a little over five minutes left to go before Furlong picks that off Ali throwing it forward Lima steps in front of that one ahead for Cordova as here comes Alanya Spore Jan Vier in he'll shoot it will miss it's actually going to be a save made by Nicholas. That's so hard to tell. Corner kick coming up. Jean Nové, the goal scorer in Siddiqui. What a clearance. Beautiful job by our signing uh, earlier on in the year. Siddiqui, our defensive midfielder. Long throw in in. Hanvier plays it in the middle. Ugrish Khan for Ali. Damjoni sending it forward. But Fatih is going to take it over for Alanya Spore. Uh, here we go with a throw in now. In the offensive end, Ali playing it back for Vink, looking for Furlong, can't find him. Damjoni, though, will gather the loose ball, play it ahead, and Augusto is going to take over and carry it forward before dropping it back uh, into the middle. Hanvier, Siddiqui stepping away to knock that one clear. Furlong now along the near sideline, back for Damjoni. Laidler ahead for Ali, double teamed, but gets it away to Yusuf. Laidler ahead, Mamadou Fall, flipping it forward left side for Furlong in the box, cutting it toward the byline, circling back. He's got Laidler in the middle. Siddiqui, Andre Siddiqui is going to score his second goal of the year and a minute and a half remaining in regulation. Kasim Pasha takes the 2-1 lead. I was talking earlier about the ball movement, and this is it. 
Furlong for Laidler across Siddiqui. Mamadou Fall providing a little bit of a screen for Muhammad as Siddiqui is able to pot it home for the second time this year to give Kasim Pasha the 2-1 lead, which will move us up into 11th place as the full time whistle is blown. 2-1 is your final score. We got outplayed quite a bit in that second half, but Kasim Pasha ending up with the last laugh as Dre Siddiqui scores in the 89th minute. The goal that proved to be the game winner that will earn him the player of the match. So what would another episode be without some more up and down? We are now in 11th place. We have 35 points after 27 matches. 10 points clear of the drop. 14 south of a European place with a whole ton of teams that we would need to jump over. So probably don't expect Europe at the end of this season. But honestly, that is okay. We have had quite a bit of stuff to deal with in our first season in Turkey. There's probably going to still be more before the season is up, but I think season two is going to be a bit of a smoother sail for us. Just, just stick around. We are planning to wrap up the season next episode against Trabzonspor and Bazaksa here. Now, if something really super interesting happens in between, we will come back a little early. But expect the end of our first season in Turkey on Monday's episode. As always, thank you very much for joining us. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you know when the next episode of Bottom to the Top is going to air. Thank you for being with us this far. We hope to see you next time. Until then, bye bar.